Social media dictates what people like nowadays. You know what I mean? Like little bitty fucking tattoos on, on young women's hands have become popular. And it's like, you do realize you're gonna get older than 19. You know, back in the day when you know you went to the fucking supermarket and there was a woman on online bagging groceries or being a cash register and she had that little, little you know, swallow or cherries on her tit or whatever, people would look at that and be like, oh my God, this woman is so trashy. What do you think's gonna happen with the 19 year old girl with the fucking breathe written on her fucking wrist? Like, it's like, so you're gonna be the the hipster version of white trash? Like, what is, what, I don't even know what that would be. It don't, it only, it's only gonna be a matter of time before Saturday Night Live decides to ruin a, a cool tattoo like they did with the tramp stamp. Like, that was a really, that was a really nice area for women to get tattooed back in the day. Now all of a sudden, it's a tramp stamp. I knew you were 19 when you got that. Fuck off. Like, some, like a writer from Saturday Night Live knows what is a cool tattoo and what should remain. You know, because if you're a tramp, every tattoo you got is a tramp stamp. <laughs> okay, thank you. Like, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily well, think it's because you got your lower back spot. tattooed yeah. or your titty shelf or fucking, your fucking yeah, side of face the boob. rocker. What happens when that I, comes up? Side yeah. of the boob. It's like, oh, I didn't realize you were one of them. I, oh, I gotta go. I gotta yeah. go. I, although I don't think there's many men that would do that. <laughs> you know, crossing industries to where it's almost like understandable sometimes, like music, like bad religion, dude. That's punk rock, dude. Not many people would understand that, but that's like people who would listen to like, or like like traditional American tattoos. You know, like that's fucking, dude, it's punk rock. It was cool, it was tried and true. You know, it was like that old school, like, man, that's music to us. And then you have like the little dainty, like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to look like you. I just want to get tattooed, something small. Like to me, I look at it like, that's top 40 music. That's radio shit. Like you, this, this style of tattooing is for the watered down person that, fits that criteria. The old school, new school, fucking silly shit, what the fuck ever. But I would love for that to come back. But what, back flash? in that day, yeah, Flash. Tattoo flash, flash is still around, they just call it Pinterest now. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah, I, the same I, don't, I don't point to the wall, I just point to my fucking screen on my phone. If I do a tattoo, whether it be for good or fucking bad, people recognize my tattoo, whether because of the style in which I draw, the colors in which I use, the saturation in which I put in the skin, whatever it is. That's what sets me apart from everybody else. And I think right now we're in a time where that's not the case. Now we've got a million fucking old school Americana guys, you know what I mean? Now you've got the hipster tattoos, you've got the, 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 the 1920 style tattoos that are just gonna look rougher and rougher as they age, you know what I mean? Like, and then you've got the fucking realism, the color of black and gray realism, which I'm again, I'm not taking a shot, little, but, Everybody's doing it. So what's separating people anymore? Before when we started, I think there was, you know, it wasn't styles. We did tattoos. You want color or not? That was it. No, yeah, true, true. And then, we, we, new then you started seeing, yeah. then you started seeing like, uh, like you know, the difference of people really starting to like really come into their own of like people doing like almost regionally where it was like the West Coast had the fine line, black and gray, really soft stuff. Not saying that it wasn't on the East Coast, it was just you yeah, just noticed that was things were a little bit more differently, you know? Yeah, but back in the day though, you had West Coast was broken up. You had Southern West Coast, and then you had the Southern, uh, you know, uh, California, you had Northern California. Northern California is where the fucking new school thing kind of fucking started. Guys like Eddie Deutsch, even guys like Scott Sylvia, Jeff Rasher, Jeff Whitehead, Marcus Pacheco, Dave Aaron Long. Kane, Dave Lum. Like those guys were. Vivian Lozaga, remember her? Like when she was doing like all the crazy colors and. Well, but that wasn't really. That was like that weird tribal. But, yeah, but, but, but you look at it now, there's like, look at a fucking tattoo that doesn't have a diamond or a fucking no, triangle exactly, behind yeah, it now. Was, like, like, it was people are like, oh, it's so new. It's like, motherfucker, well, like, look, like. If you can, like, do yourself a favor, grab an old school fucking tattoo magazine and look in the back and be yeah, like, yeah, but nobody that would, nobody there, would you know? label her as new school. That was Vivian no, Lazanga there wasn't... being Vivian Lazanga. And that's the same thing. Like, I never considered myself a new school artist. When that got dropped on me, I'm like, did I just, did I just do color tattoos? No, Chris like, Fouts dubbed that fucking name. Yeah, that kind of did. He was trying to figure out, like, what that fat line stuff, it was lined like a traditional tattoo, but it was colored in like black and gray. Like, well, it's not a traditional tattoo, and it's not this other shit. What is it? And he was like, I was like, I don't fucking know. It was just us being street kids. Like, I was, it's you just know, a good, it's I was a good, it's a good 17, 8 years tattoo. old just doing tattoos, you know? Now it's like trying to say what style of tattoo you do. is like saying, what music do you play? 
Like, no one no fucking knows. Like, you might think, oh, this is indie rock. And you're like, no, it's not. That's fucking... Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's illustrative, that. neo-traditional, yeah. Americana. Like, you do that neo-new school. You do the fucking neo-water. Like, everything's got a fucking weird... Everything's got to have a title phrase. to it, you know? Everybody, yeah. needs, everybody needs a catchphrase. But the good thing about that is, is, like, you can no longer do shitty tattoos anymore. You just got a better name for it. Yeah, right. You know? Exactly. Well, I, like, I no, no, no. That's not fucked up. That's hashtag. stylistically. Need, That's how I tattoo. Everything you know? needs a name for a yeah. hashtag. Now. Yeah. Everything's got to have a proper name so you can hashtag it properly so it's easily recognizable and found when you go on your fucking phone. The, the idea of like with the popularity of tattooing, I think, is definitely, and social media has opened up doors for us to travel, for us to meet people from around the world. You know, for us to kind of just be showcasing and look at a lot of different things. To be it, able, it has yeah, to be able to pick up. See the thing from back in the day. Like I remember the first time I went to Australia, it was like a different world. Like now, I could do something or somebody can do something right fucking now. Put it online, and some dude in China can do a better job at it in in ten minutes. Like literally, see what you did and go, oh, I I, I got this. Sit down at his board, draw something up get a client in, tattoo him for nothing, and then boom, that person has jumped the shark, and now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, well, you know, he did it first, but mine was better. And then who's the first one? It's like, it's like fucking chicken or egg. And then I think what happens is it reaches a point where everybody digs on that particular one, whether it be at the, the forefront of that style, or when it started, or towards the end of when it started, or in the middle somewhere, but that becomes the one that everybody focuses on, whether it be because of folk, uh, social media, whether it be because of algorithms and some other bullshit, but everybody sees that one. And then instead of having, you know, 60 people doing eight different styles of that particular tattoo, now everybody's focused on one. So now neo-traditional becomes, that's what neo-traditional looks like. Who the fuck cares what neo-traditional looks like? That makes no fucking sense. Like, I want to stand out. If it's neo-traditional, I'm getting labeled as neo-traditional, I still want to be able to, you, you to be able to tell that that's my tattoo. But that's not cool. So therein lies your problem. And that's the issue I think I have with styles, is the fact that everybody tries to be like that one piece. When we started, like for you to stand out, you had to be different. You had to do something so individual. You were basically creating your own thumbprint. Like you were doing something that was unique to you. Like you didn't need to see my name under a photo. You didn't need to see like it in a band or nothing. Like you could look at a tattoo and know that like that's a Tony Savaro tattoo. That's a Gunner tattoo. That's a Guy Atchison tattoo. Yeah. Like you knew like that's you know like you know that's a Philip Blue Dragon. Like you knew right off the bat who did that because it was so unique. You know now if you don't look exactly like everyone else and something's slightly off, you're a shit artist. It's like, nah, man, you missed the mark. It doesn't look like that guy's thing. You're like, I'm not trying to look like that fucking guy's thing. I, I want to look like my thing. I want to look like my shit. I've been saying for years that it's generational. Right you now. get the younger generation of tattooers that's really gone out of their fucking way to get to know who people are. And I think that's, that's really important. I can teach you technique. I can't teach you passion. Like, that's something you have. You have that love or you don't. And it's up to you to want to learn more about your craft. You know, like with any industry, that's up to you to research and, and dive into it that you learn more about your craft, bettering yourself. Like yeah. every industry has that. But and then you peers. have those some people who are like, you're a fly by night person. Like I'm not saying you can't make a splash, but dude, your ripple's gonna fucking fade real quick, you know? There, there is a lot of positive to it, but I think it's just always easier to bitch and complain. I think yeah. as I get older, it's just easier for me to be grumpy. Oh, we have you more know? to be grumpy about. Yeah. Well, really? here's, here, here, before he fucking explodes on it. So here's the idea of it. I think also it becomes regional. Like I think uh, most certainly. you'll find something here that's you know, in Manhattan, everything else is gonna be more pricey. Then as opposed to like, you're going to like some Midwest little town where like it's not as expensive to fucking cost of living. So I think you're gonna have, the economy is gonna play a part in the fact of what people have an exposable income to do. You know, it's like you look at some people like, dude, why do you charge five grand for a fucking day session? Because my clients can charge five grand a session. You know, you look at it like, dude, don't walk into a Ferrari dealership if you're if you only got Chevette fucking yeah, pockets. Yeah, but is it a real Ferrari dealership? Come on, you know, fucking break. Dude, it, it, it's you. People sell to the market you sell to. You know, like I think. Well, but that's exactly. Well, that's the same. There's a fucking. There's an idiot born every minute. But it's. But you can't blame the artist if you got. If I got someone stupid. No, and you're right. It. And and you're right. And this is where my story is leading. So I'm not, I'm not gonna name names, I will mention cities. So I'm up in New Haven, Connecticut, and a good friend of mine uh, got, for whatever fucking reason, something came, something happened, something was in the online, something, 
But this one particular artist from New York um, was all over whatever. So for whatever name reason, his name kept coming up in our shop. I'm like, cool, whatever, whatever, whatever. I had a friend of mine who I've tattooed several times, um, who I thought was smart in this. She comes up and says, oh man, have you seen these little these little tattoos, these little micro tattoos and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I've seen them. Oh, the fact that they're called micro tattoos, that's like the title for it. I wonder who fucking knew, who coined that, how to be a tattoo, uh, a, a, a regular person. It's a good salesman. So. She, she's telling me how she wants to get one of these tattoos, and she tells me the price, and I fucking lost my shit. I'm like, oh my god, for real? And I'm like, I'm gonna tell you this right fucking now. If you get tattooed by that person, I'm gonna cut that tattoo off of you and feed it to you, and watch you fucking eat it because you had. Then the best part wasn't she money. complaining to you about how much the tattoo was. Yeah, no, that was another. That was another person who did go there. Didn't get tattooed, bitched and complained, managed to talk it down to a still ridiculous rate, and then bitched about it. And I'm like, motherfucker. I know what their excuses is. I love this. Well, you know, it's New York. Really? It's New York. Well, then maybe there should be a fucking test on whether or not you're allowed to charge that much money and live in New York. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's insane. Absolutely insane. And then people come to us and be like, you must be really expensive. I'm like, no, no, I'm not. The fuck ever. To answer the question. No, but on that note, on that note, I do have friends that do day rates, and some of them are insanely reasonable, and some of them are absolutely ridiculous. I will admit that some of the ones that I, uh, some of the friends that I have that are well-known names and well-known tattooers that do charge a day rate, when I see the amount of hours they're putting into a tattoo, while I may think that is a lot of hours to put in for that particular tattoo, I can't talk shit about how they work because their work is absolutely amazing. They may also spend 10, 12 hours on a fucking tattoo. If anybody's been tattooed by Bob Terrell, you know full well that you're in for the fucking long haul. When I look at what they're charging for a day rate and you really do the math and you break it down, whether it be, could be because they're just not really smart about the way they tattoo or whatever, it's it's worth the money. Some of these other people that I hear, oh, well, he's really fast. Well, maybe he should slow the fuck down. Like, I, like that makes no fucking sense because that's not a great tattoo. Someone would have the balls to complain about what they're charging for a fucking tattoo. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think it should be open for discussion. I mean, when I was charging a buck fifty an hour, everybody was like, why are you charging so little? And I'm like, because I'm per, I don't know. Like, that's what people charge. Like, that's where I live. That's what people can afford. But I had so many people pissed at me because I was charging that. We are in a time where the pool of talent is immense. It is a galaxy fucking large. Nobody, nobody owns the fucking brand on a particular style now. There is so much fucking talent out there. Find the person for you. Do not follow the herd and jump off the fucking, like a lemming, jump off the fucking cliff like everybody else because that's what you think you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> One thing? Yeah. That's hard to narrow that shit down, man. That's like, it's like asking a kid what's his favorite Christmas present. There's no fucking way. You know? Well, there's always a favorite Christmas present. Um, oh yeah, there's like a favorite thing that bitch you you can, you hate about the industry right now. Oh God, no, there's there's, there's too many. I'm well, just exactly. saying I'm not a kid that's got to pick his favorite Christmas present. I can deal with that. You got it. You are you a fucking grumpy ass tattooer that can pick his favorite hatred thing? No. I've been doing this 25. 26 years, you're 26, 26. I've been doing it longer than start? that. No, I started in 92, 93. I started in 92, 93. And that's like 25, 26 Do years. the fucking math. It's like Because you draw, you can't fucking count for shit. I think conventions pisses me off the most. Because really? Convent, yeah. That's what you're landing on? Yeah, because conventions, I make a lot of money at conventions. Apprenticeships, I think, uh, or self-entitlement. I think uh, really fucking bother me the most. There's no mayor to say who should be in tattooing, who shouldn't be in tattooing, like none of that. Um, but that's but I to think say it's, that there shouldn't be some like you know illicit cult that you know controls it. On yeah, the, on, like we're, under we're, the wire. there should be, there should be like some kind of fucking like hooded fucking like tattoo uh, fucking justice, justice system in. goes on just smashing fucking fingers and windows and stuff. Yeah. The day happens where somebody literally comes to a convention wearing every fucking patch from every sponsorship that that motherfucker has tried so hard to get. That would be pretty awesome. That would be- Come in like a as, onesie. As, yeah, exactly. A onesie like, would be even better, yeah. A onesie like, would be even better. Like a like you roll up in like a like a helmet just with everything on it and be like, uh, and you could have glasses with like a sponsor. Like, that motherfucker even sold the front part of like, the glasses. I mean, it, 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 ha it hasn't happened yet and it's shocking to me. Like back in the day when we got, it wasn't a sponsorship. 
like back in the day, we had we had Pulse Tattoo Supply. We were friends with the owners of, of Pulse, these uh, a machine builder and a, and a guy who was helping build machines. And they were good people. They had a small company. We wanted to see them succeed. So me and a couple, and I got invited through Eric Merrill to do to to be part of that 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 team. And that wasn't even a team. It was just part of a group of friends. And we would go to conventions. We would use their stuff. And everybody assumed, oh, they're sponsored by Pulse. They're powered by Pulse. They must be sponsored by Pulse. And it was like. No, I would buy this. Like I just, they happen to give me one machine and I'm using it and I'm pushing that machine because it's a really good machine. Have you seen my cat, my, 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 my case? I also got a Seth Sapphire machine. I've got an Aaron Kane machine. I've got a Papillon machine. I've got, I've got nine other machines. Do you know why? Because I can, I can use whatever the fuck I want. I don't have to worry about someone being offended. It's like, oh, well, you're, you know, you're supposed to be a bishop artist. Why are you using that, that machine over there? And it's like, because it works better than yours. Like, like, there's none of that anymore. People aren't even willing to try something else because they tried so hard to be sponsored by one person. By one fucking greasy butter bullshit that anybody can make. You know the awesome part about it is, is too, it's like you talk to most of these guys, for one, it's like they want the sponsorship, be like, hey, would you buy that stuff if you had to pay for it? Well, like, no, 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 I would just call this other company. I'm like, okay, great, so you don't really back it. But then there's the ones that are like, like, oh man, you're sponsored, but like, what did it cost you to be sponsored? Like, they gave you one free machine. Like, really, that's all it cost? Like, you're flying it everywhere. You've changed your whole life around. Like, your fucking attire, your wardrobe, the conventions you shop at, the, you know, like, everything you do is because you got a single machine. But if every like, company gave you would have done away with a single tattoo, and you could have bought that machine and fucking not had to worry about fucking pissing anyone off or fucking stepping on anyone's dick. Like, really, that's, you were only worth fucking a $400 machine? Like that makes sense. It's a teeter totter too. I think you know it goes back and forth, but it's there's always a, I guess weird weird gray area to where, you know, like some people are like I get it. Product placement marketing it it, it it has its place in our industry nowadays. It's silly to think that it doesn't, but there comes that point to where it's like you look at some of these guys and it's like, you know they bought their friendship, they bought their coolness, you know they bought their off the rack attire. So it's like. You know, I am that NASCAR driver, you know, and this is no shot at NASCAR fans or nothing like that, but you know, yeah, it's just, I was gonna say, man, it's, I want to go down yeah, that fucking street. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just easy to fucking just, you've became this like, this billboard of just labels and it's like, hey man, you know what we should concentrate on a little bit more? i fucking just doing a better clean tattoo. Make well, that be crazy, you know, like, stop worrying about just, you know, fucking products and shit, just, just be a better tattooer.